All right, well, welcome to Friday night at the Brick Classic. This is Devin Haru along with the Brick Crew. Glad to be along with all of you guys. A little exhausted after that latest thriller. But now you're watching the La Vegas Suns, Anthony Israel, for three. Taking on the Walter Murray Marauders. And if Coach Daw doesn't make his way over here, I'm going to duck out. Tell him if he doesn't want to do it, we don't have to do it.
folks. Hopefully you're enjoying this game. 7-7. The boldest out of Regina and Walter Murray Friday night here at the Classic. Obviously, we just got done with the Classic. 58-51 Thriller. In overtime. The Centennial Chargers were able to pull one out of the fire with a 58-51 overtime win. Now, uh, you know, earlier today at breakfast we were going to say, how are you going to be remembered? What's your legacy going to be? And tonight, well, guess what? There was a memory created and there was a game that people aren't going to forget for a really, really long time. And we've got the head coach now, Coach Corey Daw. What's going through your mind when Michael Farian hits that three ball from now? Tears in my eyes almost, but what a player. I mean, you know, we talked about should we foul right away? Because there's only three seconds and we weren't in bonus. One of the guys comes over, should we foul? No, three seconds, he's got to get the length of the court and get something off. Absolutely. You know, let's stay in front of him, force it to... Wow. I mean, I thought he launched it a little early, even. Like, yeah. he let it go. He had more time, and he let it go. And, I mean, the, the, the roar of the crowd was deafening. And the look on our, you know, our faces, but it got the composure. So often a team that will force overtime carries the momentum, right? That's it. And I, I was worried about that. I was worried about that. You, you do something like that. But our composure, um, you know, we made some plays. We continued to play defense. Um, and we made some free throws down the stretch. We were hitting free throws. It was critical. That was the turning point in the game because I believe right until the game was sealed, all of your points in overtime were on free throws. Yeah. Talk about fundamentals because teams that win this tournament do the little things well. And Ryan Schmidt had ice in his veins when you needed it. But then you had guys that were making... Two for two from the line every time. I mean, you got it done when you needed it, and obviously you got to be proud of your men today. I'm so proud of them. I mean, uh, it takes a team to win. It's not just one or two guys. And uh, the defensive end, I thought, was was key. A rebound was a moment early that I wasn't happy with, but down the stretch, you know, they weren't getting as many second, second, third shots. We just have to defend the three on them. I mean, they just shoot so well yeah. that if you don't defend the three... You know, I mean, I think they hit three or three in a row at one point and took the lead up by five. Yeah. And we're scrambling, but the fundamentals and I think conditioning, you know, I thought our conditioning showed that our, you know, we got some athletes, so did they, but I mean, athletes playing this game, the conditioning at the end to have some legs on those shots. And yeah, just what a great game, two great teams. Coach, you coach the Bedford Road Redmond in this gym from 1997 to 2006. Now you're back here as a coach of a different team. It's your first appearance at Britain. Throughout the broadcast, I said, perhaps this is a changing of the guard tonight. You have a Holy Cross team that's been in this tournament 40 times. This is your first. Unreal. Changing of the guard. Well, they've been consistent for 40 years. I mean, their program, their legacy is something other, other schools try to model because they really have been exceptional for decades. And, I mean, if we could become something that's a, a program like that over a long period of time, I mean, that would be great. But, I mean, they're the model of excellence in, in Saskatoon and Saskatchewan for their athletics and the school spirit. I mean, it's great for our Centennial Chargers to come and see the way Holy Cross, you know, it's, it's built into their tradition. It, it's part of their identity as a school. It's this Brit experience because they've been here and they, they understand it. I think maybe after tonight our Centennial students understand what Brit is about and what's going on here because it was pretty magical. I talked about that too. I said, boy, for the first time for these Centennial Chargers fans to be here tonight, they're hooked. I mean, that's your number one selling piece, your marketing, and everybody in the school will be talking about it Monday. Okay, let's move on. Tomorrow you're playing in the semifinal. You have never coached in a semifinal at Brick. It's 3 o'clock. It's semifinal Saturday. And you're going up against a Sturgeon team that we don't know a lot about. How do you make sure you as a coach are prepared for that 3 o'clock game tomorrow? Yeah, like, well, uh, you know, talking to other coaches, I, I got here and watched the game, but, you know, you only see them. 
you want to yeah. see a little bit, and, uh, and you kind of make some things there. And really, I think it comes down to what do we do. I'm a big believer in that. You can, you can pick apart other teams all you want, but in my opinion, what do we do? And if we take care of the business, you know, our defensive rotations and systems and, and the communication that's happened on offense, then I'm confident whatever will happen, happen. And, and that's what Brits all about. Every team here is good. And we're here to play and improve ourselves for the long haul. Um, hopefully we're not playing our best basketball yet. We want to play our best basketball as the season continues. And, and, and being the hunt late in, in March is, is where we'd like to be. And this is all stepping stones and, and, and building towards that. What a great experience. We're so what an honor to be here. And we just thank the great committee for, for thinking of us and, and giving us giving us the nod to the just there's nothing like it now. Yeah, and you know, I think the big thing now is just to make sure you don't have an emotional letdown in that semifinal tomorrow after coming off of this high. That'll be the big thing. But for right now, you've got to be loving it. You've got to be loving the night. I know you've got a lot of people to talk about this game with. <laughs> so go enjoy it, Coach. And you obviously know how uh, proud and excited I am for you. So congratulations. Thanks, Devin. You guys do a great job. It wouldn't be great without you, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I was losing it up here. <laughs> I was absolutely losing it. And what, I mean, just to be a part of everything that was tonight uh, was something special. And the great moment, you know, like we talked this morning, the great moment, the legacy. Tonight, 1,500 people and all of our, you know, internet fans witnessed, witnessed yeah. a legacy, a great moment, a big shot, great players at both ends, both teams. Heart and soul, but yeah, unbelievable. And the, and the right team won. The Centennial Chargers winning a thriller in overtime tonight, 58-51. I couldn't believe it. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, man. All right, so you're tuning in, Walter Murray, Revolta Suns, Friday night at the Classic. Yeah, see you tomorrow. All right, 3 p.m. semifinal. You know, Coach Daw and Matt Bourne and Neil Genie, all those guys will be ready to go. And they uh, definitely have everybody's support now. So they'll be enjoying it. I'm going to duck out of here. You guys can watch. You've got a score clock. I've got to get to bed because I've got games to call tomorrow. That's it from me. This is Devin Huru on behalf of the whole Brick crew and everybody that's making this possible. Thanks for tuning, you, uh, tuning in tonight. <laughs> I need a break. So long until tomorrow.
I gotta stop beating me so people can get out of there like popcorn.
the other guy says something stupid. And he's like, John Madden. Just something that gets themselves out of You know, you know what they say? Um, 90% of this game is half mental. <laughs> I kid you not, he says it. 90% of this game is half mental. Okay. I'd agree, 90% is not a foul. I do. No. You should control. You have to do the matter.
48 Russell Murray with the lead. As we head for the home stretch, 5.25 left. And the crowd has been very loud and Now, uh, 13, makes a fake, cuts to the middle, and Lobovis will call for a foul here. Put on. I'm sorry, John. Yeah. Go ahead. Second personal foul for some guy on the team who played some game. I forget which one. Oh, okay. Number 13 has the ball. And number 15, 13 is definitely a bounce. That's right. Six seconds with a shot clock. Something just is going to happen. Oh, they turn it over. And Lobovus is running up the court. And a foul. Oh, two shots. Two shots. I forget. I don't know how many fouls, and I don't know who it was. If you listen close to that, they know. Oh, number 13, his second foul of the game. Yeah. Say something witty. <laughs> Insert witty scene here. And number seven goes up to shoot. And he nails it. And the flying Hawaiian nails it. He makes it rain. Number four. Number four comes into the game. And he gets the ball. And he's dribbling up. And oh, this is for all the modern oh, fights. Oh, four. four and four. Passes it off to some other guy. The guy number four again. Number four again. It's a person X. That's all. Oh, look at this. Little bitch. Oh, puts it back to the Number nine's getting chippy. He's, he's going to get slapped if he's not kept. Oh, no. Nice shot. And oh, man. This game is by the ball. This, this e ending is going to be... Time to run. Falls, lives, fumble. Oh, the foul somehow. This ending is going to be legend. Wait for it. Wait for it. Gary. <laughs> oh, right. The ball is on the sideline. And the buzzer sounds for some reason. And the whistles, too. Something's up. Oh, time out. We'll be right back after these announcements. Uh, 92.9, the goal. Is he coming back tomorrow? Hey, 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 and now we're here. <laughs> now we're here with Frank McCrystal. <laughs> yeah, that's the Rams coach. Yeah. Hey, hey, Lions. All right, we're back to action. Five seconds to go. Here we go. This is Grover. <laughs> Each team have a little chit chat and their bench. Deciding where to put their little fat in that little net. And the Bulls is on the court first, waiting. The energy waiting for Walton Murray to show up. The energy in this up. building is just electric. That's right. There's a great Jasperonic show every year, don't they? Oh. They do. Yeah. Why am I? I have to get my pacemaker. We play every year, though. Number nine is the ball and oh, 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 o
Mark Murray doing another legend. Hey. What a great turnout for this game. What a great crowd. Right. Oh, this crowd is something else. Talk about the sixth man, Joe. Yeah. The sixth man is coming through. Oh. Oh! That, and he makes it. And it's a limited ball. It's not over, folks. It's not over. 44-42. with Walter Murray on top. top. Under three minutes to go. Charlie Chapman along with Barney Stinson to catch the action here at Bedford Road. And... Oh! Goes in! Number 12 taking it. Oh! That was clutch! A clutch move! Two and a half minutes left to drive the game. And they're playing a little pitching catch out there. Same score as us. It's number 12 who shoots it. Oh, he oh, gets it up and he rims it like a real girl. Murray gets the ball. He rims it like a real girl. <laughs> number 11. Dancing around. Number 13. Still dancing. Number whatever that number is. Pass the number whoever. It's not big. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. We got a substitution here. Oh, we got a substitution. It's something else. Timeout, maybe. Oh, that's a timeout. And is it the organizers coming here to kick us off? No. No, there's 55 seconds left. Come on. 52 seconds. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. They're actually looking at can we actually be heard? Can we actually on air? I don't know. I don't think you guys are supposed to be there. Really? Yeah, come on out. All right. We're here. No, no, no. We don't want anyone out there. Randy, 
And we're back on Wired 963. Sorry.